Here, in this video, I will be explaining mathematically the process behind how linear regression models work, also showing you the code implementation of this math so that you can see the model for yourself. Let's start with this salary dataset. Here we have the years of experience, which I'm going to call as input label X, and we have the corresponding salary, which I'm going to call as output label Y. Here for let's say the first row, I will be calling the input as x superscript 1 and the output label as y superscript 1 all the way up to m, which is 30 in this case. In general, it's just x superscript i comma y superscript i. Here, linear regression uses this xi term to a function f of xi, which is equal to w xi plus b. Here, w and b are parameters, and this function will give us a straight line. Now, the goal of linear regression is to make this line perfectly fit the given data. That is, for any given input x, the value taken from this line should be as close to, or if not a perfect match to the actual output y. We can only get this type of a perfect line by using the right values of w and b. And to get these right values, we use cost function. Okay, so here is the code implementation of how the main function would look like. First, let's import all the modules that is required. Pandas as pd, then we will also need numpy as np followed by matplotlib as well, matplotlib.pyplot as plt, like that. Now I will create the data frame object and pass in the file path, pd.read underscore csv. I will pass in the file path like that, and then print it, df.head. We see that we have years of experience and salary. Let's just drop this column by typing in df.drop mention the column name to be unnamed comma in place equal to true like that now when you run this you get the years of experience and the salary so i will assign the training example as years of experience and the output label as salary so x will be the years of experience and the output label y will be df of salary, like that. Nice. Okay, so now let's define the main function itself. First, let's get the number of rows by using the len function, and then define the main function, predictions, and pass in the values x, y, and the parameters as well, w and p. This is the main function where we will be using to get the actual predictions by giving in the right parameters. So the way this works is first we will have to create an empty array np.zeros of the same size as the training set or the data set itself. It's going to be given n. Now for i in range, it is just looping over the number of rows for i in range of m. f of i will be, as I said earlier, w into x of i plus b and that's it we can just return f now f nice actually let me just call this f of x to better understand over here as well run a code i forgot to put this in caps let's just run this and then this nice now let's just check if our function is working really quickly. First, let's define a random value, 10,000 for w and 20,000 for b, and then call the prediction function. Pass in x, comma y, comma w, comma b. And then we do get an array of values. Nice. So now we have to define the cost function. Let's say I assign a random initial value to w and b. This turns out to give a line like this. Now here, for a specified value of x, this would be the value from the function and this would be the actual output. The difference between the predicted and the actual point, let me just write that in the mathematical term, that is f of xi minus yi. And I will square this term as well. Now this, we will have to do this to each and every single training example. That is from i is equal to 1 all the way up to i is equal to m or 30 in this case. Then we should find the average of this. So I'm going to denote this by using the summation symbol and then finally dividing this by m to get the average. This right here is the cost function. And for convenience, we divide by 2m rather than just m. Now the goal of linear regression is going to be to minimize this cost function. Because as you see, the cost function is somewhat closely related to the difference between the predicted output and the actual output. 
and hence it has to be as minimum as possible. This is done by the method called gradient descent. So here is the code implementation of the cost function. We will start by defining the cost function and then we will pass in x, y, w and b and then first initialize the total cost variable to be 0 and then we will get f as well, the prediction function passing in x, y, w, comma b like that. Now we have the function itself, we also have the y values through here. We will first have to calculate the difference term for each and every single row. So first again, we will loop through each and every single row for i in range of m. We will have to first calculate the difference term and then square that. So I'm just going to do that directly, total cost plus equal to f of i minus y of i, this is the difference term, and we will need to square this. So I will use the exponential sign to be 2, nice. Now finally, we will have to divide this by 2m to get the final total cost value. Total cost equal to total cost divided by 2 times m. Let me just put this in parentheses. And then return total cost like that. We will check if cost function is working. Cost function, pass in x, y, w, and b. And we do get a value. Of course, this value is just too big. We will have to reduce the cost functions and get the right values for w and b so that we can make an accurate prediction. So let's compute gradient next. This gradient descent first finds the minimum possible value j, which can be called as minima. Then it will decide at which direction should we progress w and b so that j gets closer to minima. After that, it will take a small step towards that direction and then repeats the same cycle once again from that point. Mathematically, we're updating w and b constantly, so the equation goes like w equal to w minus alpha times the differentiation term of the cost function with respect to w. And similarly for b as well. Now, you're not expected to know differentiation, the framework will do the job for you, hence I will show you the equation itself. But then you just have to know that this term right here will determine the direction at which w and b should move. Let's say, for example, the w value is just too small than the value that we are going after. Then this term will be a negative value, so that a negative and negative becomes positive, and hence w is increased slightly. Feel free to check and confirm the calculations yourself for both cases. And this term is learning rate, which is a constant that determines how big of a step are we going to take in the selected direction. This value shouldn't be too big. Let's again take the example of w being too small than the value that we are going after. Even though we selected the right direction, if we keep the learning rate too high, then we might end up making w too big and hence we will have to reduce it again, and this keeps shuffling back and forth. As for gradient descent, we will first have to calculate the gradient itself, that is the differential term, that is d of dw, and we will have to do that for d of db using the cost function. So first let's compute gradient by using this function, compute underscore gradient, pass in the same x, y, and w comma b, and then first let's initialize the differential terms, dj, dw will be 0, similarly for dj, db, 0. Now let's loop over the number of rows for i in range of m. And only inside this we will have to use the predictions function to get f and then we can calculate the difference term by using f of i minus y of i. I will explain why this in a second because we're just doing this inside for i in range of m whereas here we just do that outside over here. So first let's calculate the predictions, pass in x, y, w and v and then let's calculate the difference term which will be f of i minus y of i, like that. And now the dj dw value will be updated by just adding in the difference term into the xi term. This is the differential equation for dj dw in terms of dj db. It's just the difference term. We don't need to multiply xi. So just type in difference. And then finally, we will have to divide this by m dj dw equal to dj dw by m and then we will do that for db as well dj db by m we will return this return dj dw comma dj db so this is the differential term and we will calculate that using calculus we got the values 
Now when you run this code, I forgot to put in right here. Let's run this and compute gradient. Uh, compute gradient and then pass in x, y, w, comma b. Let's run that. And then we get a set of values for w and b, the differential term of w and b. Since this is negative, this will be added to the ffx function, so that w is slightly increased. So the initial value that we gave for w is much lower than what we expected it to, as said in the explanations. Now we will actually calculate the gradient descent itself. So let's define gradient descent. And then we will again pass in x, y, w, and b. Followed by, we will also have to pass in the learning rate, which is alpha. And then we will also have to mention the number of iterations. How many number of iterations should, should it run? Iterations, like that. Now we will create two lists, j history, which is an empty list. And then we will do that for w history as well, which will be this. So this will hold all of the previous values of the cost function. We can use this to check the trend of how cost function is working. And same for w as well. Now I will create a variable w use and then just use the copy case. This is just to avoid modifying the main parameter itself so that we can do all of the manipulations in w use and then have this to be as it is. We will do that for b as well. b use case will be b like that. Now let's start iterating over the number of iterations. So for i in range of iterations, then we will first have to calculate the differential terms, dj dw and dj db, will be by using compute gradient function. And then we will pass in x, comma y, comma w, comma b, like that. This will calculate the differential term for dw and db by passing in the new w parameter each and every single time. So we will use the use case of w to check how the dj dw and dj db values are changing. Now we will have to update the w use value to the function that was mentioned, to the equation that was mentioned earlier, minus alpha times dj dw and but for b as well, b use minus alpha times dj db, like that. And I will also calculate the cost function, just in case. We will just have to append that to this and to check if cost function is actually decreasing and if w and, values are, w and b values are getting to the right values. And to check if w and b are getting to the right values, we will also have to calculate the cost function. So cost function will be x comma y, comma w use case, followed by the b use case. Actually over here as well, I just have to type in b use, and then I will append this to j history. Actually, I just realized that we will have to put this inside the for loop, because we're doing it for n number of iterations. And then I will append this, j dot append, j history dot append, the cost function, like that. And then now we will return the values. Return w use case, comma the b use case, followed by j history and w history. And of course, I forgot to do one more thing. We just have to make this term that it contains all of the w values. So to do this, we will also add in a print statement to check how the cost function is changing. So I will declare an if condition if the number, the nth number of the iteration divided by the total number of iterations divided by 10. If this thing gives zero, then we can print it. First, let's append w, w history dot append the w use case like that, and then print the cost. I will use formatted strings for this. Cost at the i-th iteration. Like 
like that, will be W history. Actually, we just have to print the cost like that. Close the brackets like that. Now let's just run this and see if this is working. It does. So let's first calculate gradient descent. And given the values x, y, w, comma, b, we will also have to define alpha value, which I will keep to be a small number, 0 0.01, followed by the number of iterations, which I'm going to keep as 1,000. So after 1,000 iterations, we hopefully get the right values for w and b. We will pass in alpha, followed by iterations, like that. Now let's run our code. Gradient descent is not defined because we didn't run this. Oops, I forgot to put S over here. Now let's run our code. And there we go. We see different cost values for different iterations and it keeps on decreasing until after 1000 iteration we get a value for W and B. So let's just put this to the variables w b comma the j history comma the w history we'll be using the gradient function print w comma b like that now run this and then we get the final values for w and b it's just slightly above our initial predictions anyways Let's print and uh, let's plot this and see if it's working. PLT.scatter first the initial points x comma y and I will keep the color to be red and I will also do the pi plot case plot x comma y comma the blue line color to be blue and then now the prediction done by y hat. Okay, I forgot to also mention the y hat function. So y hat will be again done by the prediction function. Prediction of x comma y comma the values determined by the gradient descent function like that. And now I will plot this plt.plot x comma y hat comma the color to be green and I will keep the line width to be 2.5 so that it's better visible to our eyes. Line width will be 2.5, like that. Now let's run our code. Oops, I forgot to do this. And there we go, we get a straight accurate prediction to the given data set, nice. Also, I just want to show you how the cost function graph looks as well, because it's really important that you get a cost function graph where it's actually decreasing. The cost function should decrease as the number of iterations increase. So we will do plt.plot. Number of iterations will be x value. Iterations, we have to use the range function. And then we will have to mention the y value, which is the j history. Did I actually use it as j history? Yes. So it's j his, like that. We will keep the label, uh, we will keep the color to be red. And then we will type in plt.show. Now when you run this code, so we see a cost function that goes like this. This is how a cost, a typical cost function should look like. You, it always should go down. The cost function should always go down as the number of iterations increase. If initially it goes up for let's say, I'm just going to change the values of w and b initially to be zero to show you something. And I will run all of the cells above to from here. So run all above. And then do this. Now let's run our code and see for this one. We still get the same graph, but then for cost function, it does this. It's always fine to get some values like this, but just make sure that the cost function always decreases as the number of iterations increases. And finally, you are seeing the math. 
Now this might be time for you to see how to traditionally build the same model using machine learning frameworks like scikit-learn to get much better results. We have a video on that one as well.